footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our collegesportingnews.com FCS Game of the Week preview between the Penn Quakers and the Harvard Crimson. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with Penn. When quarterback Billy Ragone is under center, this is a very tough Quaker football team. Now backup Ryan Becker has done a solid job, but not at the level of Ragone when he's back there at the pivot position. But at the end of the day, both guys have to protect the football a lot better. And this week versus Harvard, the main goal will be to run the football. And the Quakers have an excellent one-two punch in the backfield with Kyle Wilcox and Spencer Kalsar. Sealing the edge and getting to the outside in my opinion would be the best route versus a very stout Crimson run defense. Defensively, I'm a big fan of the way Penn can apply pressure with that 5-2 defense. This week versus the Crimson, they'll have to be able to generate pressure with their front five as sophomore Austin Taps, the defensive end, 6'3", 275. He's played at an all-Ivy level all season long, and they really need to continue to wreak havoc on opposing offenses to have a shot this week versus one of the best teams in the FCS. Now let's move over to Harvard in this ballgame, and if it wasn't for an overtime loss to Princeton, the Crimson would once again be the class of the Ivy League, and this is a well-balanced offense that's getting stellar play from the offensive line on both ends of offense. Now versus Penn, Harvard should be able to spread the field and force the Quakers out of that unique 5-2 defense. And by spreading the field, Harvard is still within the framework of their offense, but it puts a lot of pressure and a lot of strain on Penn's defense, and you'll have those opportunities to attack the individual matchups in the passing game. Defensively, in the secondary, I'd go with more cover two and cover four, or even a loose cover three to keep everything in front of you and be in better position to slow down the Quakers' running game. Read and react to the ball in the passing game versus shaky quarterback play is probably the best approach you want to have if you're Harvard. The X Factor for the Penn Quakers will be their red zone offense. Right now, only 50% of their opportunities are resulting in touchdowns. They have to do a better job. When you're facing a team like the Crimson, you have to put seven on the board and not three if you're planning to pull off the upset. The X Factor for the Crimson will be their passing game. They're going to have to get Penn out of that 5-2 defense by hitting some plays in the passing game early. If they're able to do so, that's going to weaken that defense. Then they'll be able to run the football later on in the ball game. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ballgame. For the Quakers, they have to maximize the opportunities. Like I've said before, their red zone offense is lacking. They have to come away with sevens instead of threes. And the safeties on defense will be in coverage a lot more so than often in this ballgame. So they're going to have to excel in a passing game in order for the Quakers to have success. And the quarterbacks, whether it be Ragone or even Becker, both guys have to play mistake-free football in order for the Quakers to knock off the Crimson. And for Harvard in this ballgame where you're facing an overaggressive defensive front or a defense that's unique like the 5-2, the misdirection running game will be ideal. That's your counters, your traps, your draws. That's how you can influence those defensive tackles to get upfield and get out of position so you can get big plays on the ground. And I would say you have to win early on defense. The Penn Quakers offense is based upon ball control and running the football. Putting these guys in second and long and third long situations bodes well for your chances to knock off the Quakers. And I look at tight ends getting involved in the game early. That's Cameron Brate. That's Tyler Ott. Both guys are outstanding. Brate is an All-American in my opinion. Both guys have to get involved, again, to weaken that 5-2 defense. Now here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to keep an eye on in this ball game for Penn. Quarterback Billy Rigon, despite the down year, is a very solid prospect, does a great job with the short to intermediate passing game. And I'm a big fan of Evan Jackson, the safety, does a great job on both ends of defense, very good in run support, and also does a great job covering tight ends and slot receivers. And for Harvard, Cameron Braid is one of the best tight ends in the country that you've never heard of. 6'5", 245, you can flex him out, you can flank him out, he can get it done, he's a very good prospect. And Chris Splintler back there in the secondary, outstanding corner with great instincts and ball skills. Skills. So all four guys are very solid prospects that you want to keep an eye on when these two teams kick off this weekend. John Outland, for whom the Outland Trophy is named for, was an outstanding player for the Penn Quakers from 1897 to 1899. He was a two-time All-American as both an offensive lineman as well as a halfback. One of the best offensive linemen in Crimson history was Mike Clare, who played tackle from 1998 to 2001. He was a three-year starter, a two-time All-Ivy League performer, and was also a consensus All-American.
I like Harvard in this ball game. They're very dominant on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And I think what will happen defensively, they'll slow down the running game of Penn, putting these guys in passing situations, and they'll be able to excel. And on offense, they'll spread the field, force the Quakers out of that defense, and they'll be able to attack the individual matchup. So I like Harvard to win this ball game versus the Penn Quakers.